instant right now. This is an instant review, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. Today, we are reviewing the new Star Wars of the Force Awakens movie, um, which was altogether really, really good. I just saw it yesterday. Obviously, I got back at like half 11 at night because it was a really late film, um, so I couldn't review it last night, but I'm going to review it today. Um, and let's just start off with this picture, this uh, advertisement. Um, as I was saying in my last Star Wars um, movie, I was saying um, that there's already been two Death Stars. Oh, by the way, this is a total spoiler review. Uh, I'm going to do all the spoilers and all the good bits and all the bad bits. I'll put it in the title, don't worry. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying, there's already been two Death Stars, and I was really hoping they wouldn't do another Death Star in this movie. So no, they didn't do a Death Star. They did a Death Planet, which was like ten times bigger, and it's that thing there. I'll try and get a photo of it in this clip, but I might not be able to, because obviously the movie's not out yet. Uh, so yeah, that thing there, it's the Death Planet, or something along those lines. Um, new characters. Obviously you've got Khan, which is the bad guy there. Um, he, at the start, in the trailer, I thought he was going to be a really good character. It turns out he really wasn't. I mean, I liked it when he had his mask on, but for the majority of the film he had his mask off. And I understand that's because Darth Vader had to have his mask on, because that's what kept him alive. And they're trying to keep that running and then saying, oh, actually, he's human underneath. But I thought it was too human. They were trying to add a human aspect to him. So it's got a more sort of, like, you believe him more. But I didn't like how human he was. He was too child. Because he was meant to be, again, spoilers, but he was meant to be Han Solo and Princess Leia's son, who had turned to the dark side after Luke had trained him, and then Luke uh, vanished, and they were all trying to find him. Uh, because he thought it was his fault that he turned to the dark, dark side because he didn't do a good enough job. But I thought it was too much of a child. He, he looked too young, I think. Um, the new girl actor, no, I thought she was really good and really strong role. And you can definitely tell the last minute or so that Ray, uh, the new character who's there, um, who's on the good side, it looks like she's holding a bad lightsaber, but it's not as a stick. And then uh, Khan's lightsaber got in the way it. Looked a bit weird, but that's meant to represent that she's fighting uh, Khan, and she had a big battle, and she won. The thing was, she was slowly gaining the Force. In the original movies, you had to be trained for years and years and years to be able to use the Force, but she just magically was able to use the Force. She got captured, and then suddenly she can do the Jedi mind tricks and uh, use the Force with like her hand and stuff to grab a uh, lightsaber. Um, and normally this takes years of training, but for her it just comes instantly. Which, when I first saw it, I was like, wait, how, how can she just be a random person off this planet? Parents left her when she was young, and then suddenly now she used the Force. Well, massive spoilers for the next movie. Rey, the girl, is Luke's daughter. There you go. That That's it. Spoiler alert. Look, my computer's even lagging because it doesn't want me to tell you the massive spoiler. But that it didn't actually specifically say that in the movie, but it's very obvious it's going to happen. Okay, let's move on to Han Solo because he's uh, getting pretty old, as you can see in the movie, but he's still really funny. Uh, I love Han, and I think that's the reason most of the people went to see the movie, actually, because Han Solo was in it. If Han Solo wasn't in it, I think a lot less people would go and see the movie. But no, um, he's played as a really old character, and he's meant to be the granddad sort of figure. He's teaching the new people, uh, Ray and the other one, who I always feel... Oh, Finn. Uh, it's like F1... What's it? What's it? He's, he's originally a clone, um, but then he decides he doesn't want to fight and all sorts. Uh, so he leaves. And in the end, he dies. But is this the end of Finn? Well, obviously he dies. But it's probably not going to be. It's a Disney film, so they're probably going to bring him back. As everyone is exactly the same with him, just as a clone. Because he's the one that's been cloned. Or he's one of the clones. They can just bring back him, but as another clone. So it'll be the same actor, but in a different personality. Which will probably happen, just to make it a bit more interesting. But personally, I didn't really like his character. Uh, Finn's character was a bit weak, I thought. So I didn't really like that role, but um, that doesn't matter, because you've got loads of other new roles. Uh, you've got 
Ray, which I, I really liked. I thought it really works. Obviously, they're bringing a girl onto it because um, in the past you've had Anakin and Luke, who are the main characters, but now you've got a girl who can use the Force and all sorts. There have been ones in the prequels. Uh, they use quite a lot of female Jedi type thing, but they're all aliens. Now you've got a human Jedi, and it's just more more personal. Um, you've also got a couple of more interesting characters. You've got Poe, which, yeah, it's the same name as uh, Kung Fu Panda, but never mind. Uh, that figure, just there. Uh, he's a TIE fighter pilot, and he's the best one in the galaxy. Um, so was Anakin and Luke as well. They were, like, the best pilots, but never mind. He He's a pilot, and he's, like, really high up in the, um, the Rebellion. Um, but you didn't really see much of him. In the first couple of... Um, in the first, like, 20-minute section... He has supposedly died and got sunk in the sinking sand. And then he came back uh, towards the middle sort of stage and he was fighting. I thought he was a really good character and I wanted to see more of him, but you didn't. I think in the next ones you will see more of him, but in this one you didn't really see much. Which was quite disappointing, but never mind. Maybe in the next um, two movies, because obviously they're doing the rest of the trilogy. Uh, number seven and nine. Uh, no, seven and nine? Sorry. Eight and nine, obviously. Um, a few other characters. There were the, the new commander, who was a woman of the, um, the clones. Uh, I thought, again, she, she was quite a good character. I didn't really like the voice, because the idea behind the clones is they're all the same clone. But this one was one different clone, and she was a woman, which didn't... I didn't like the, the sound effects of it. It didn't really work. And again, she wasn't in it much. She was in it at the start. And then at the end, but you could have just not had her, or had her, but just as a clone voice or a stronger, darker, maybe, character. Um, you've got new droids. You've got the R2 unit, which is the little round unit there, who is adorable. And Disney's managed to sell hundreds of little toys for, um, with him on it. It's a little mook-controlled toy. Um, which he, he is, it's like a tiny little toy, it's like that big probably, and it just rolls around the place. Guess how much it is? A hundred and fifty pounds. I mean, if you buy that present for your kid for Christmas, I mean, I, I don't see why you would really buy it. I found it quite sad how R2-D2 wasn't in it much. I mean, he was in it, uh, and he was there, but he was like, um, low power mode or something. Um, and at the very end, he came alive and, um, obviously put on the map which everyone had been looking for, and R2-D2 had a map of where Luke Skywalker was, and there was one piece, piece missing, and then the new R2-D2 unit had it, and then shone it up as a hologram, and it all fit together, and that was quite, that was like the end scene. And then obviously, um, Ray went to find him, and then eventually found him on uh, a planet with like loads of water and a really steep mountain, and Luke had obviously been there for a long time, because there were like it was like a massive village built out of uh, slate rocks and it was a pretty amazing place um and maybe that's where he wanted to train was Jedi we don't really know because obviously there's a 30 year gap between the movies but that's just how it is um more characters you've got a thousand year old Yoda sort of uh figure woman uh she's just there really really old really small she's got um a bar sort of thing, and they go and see her, and then that's where Ray finds the lightsaber, um, and like touches it, and then gets all the memories of like loads of stuff, and sees Luke and them and stuff. Um, but one thing I was again, th this movie has some really good things, and I thought J.J. Uh, Abrams was really good to come up with it and carry on with the legacy. It must have been really hard for him to go to the level he did with the movie and uh, try and face the expectations of all the fans that wanted a really good movie. I mean, it could have been absolutely terrible, but it was actually a really good movie. So yes, there are really good bits about it and there are quite downside bits. One thing I would have really found it hilarious to watch is when they um, Han Solo, Chewbacca, uh, Ray uh, and Finn all walked into the bar um, with a thousand-year-old woman who I don't remember the name of, but never mind. Um, I wanted the music to be playing. Instead, it was some really, like, low, not-very-good music. And then, obviously, the thousand-year-old woman shouted out, 
Han Solo, and then everyone turned around and looked at him and was like, a bit like um, in the original movies. Uh, but there was no gunfights or anything in the bar, which, never mind. Oh, and there was one other thing. Uh, hands being chopped off. There were no hands being chopped off. I didn't recall any hands being chopped off. There are a few, like, scratches and stuff, but no hands. Um, so that joins the no hand uh, chopping off movies. Because there's only ever been, in the first one, Phantom of Menace, and now this one, with no hands being chopped off. Which is uh, 2 and 7 not being chopped off, or 5 and 7, which is pretty insane. I think just by watching this movie, I appreciate more now the, um, the Battlefront game that Xbox has just released. Because the fight scenes in Battlefront come from this new movie, uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. And they're really, really good. And it looks just like the movie, almost. And they're really good. And Battlefront's a, an amazing game. I just wanted to put this in my review. Because the similarities, it's just it's just really, really good. There were quite a few hidden messages in this movie. For one thing, there was comedy. Um, in When You're on the Planet of the Home of Rey, um, you had the Finn, who just crash-landed and wanted some water. He was drinking out of the, the big uh, bowl that the sort of massive rhino-y sort of pig creature was drinking out of. And it was a bit disgusting. But when he went to look at Ray with, um, obviously he had the R2 unit that he was looking for, um, all you saw in the just behind him, like there, was this massive rhino's butt. And it was just there for two minutes while they were like staring at each other. Which was a bit like... Did you really need that? And it's just something to watch, really. Uh, you've got other messages. Um, there was a strong uh, relevance with Hitler in it. Uh, for instance, um, you had uh, the commander sort of person, the officer, was standing at the top just before they like beamed uh, that massive weapon that they've now got from the planet Death Star, which was a bit ridiculous. It sucked up the energy from the sun. The sun basically went inside the planet and then it got beamed, the sun was what charged it, the sun got destroyed and went inside the planet. And then it beamed onto a planet and the planet got destroyed. Or planets, as it did in the movie. Uh, so yeah, the, um, the sort of capital all got blown up, so that's obviously not going to be in the next trilogies. Because I, I didn't really like the capital. I think it was actually more in... It, let me think. Yeah, it was in the prequels, I don't think it was so much in... Um, actually, I don't think it was at all. Actually, no, it was a bit. Um, in the originals, but it was more in the prequels, and I'm glad they did blow up, because I didn't really want to see much of it. But again, it's a ridiculous weapon. If you thought the Death Star was ridiculous, that had to be right next to the planet to blow up. But this can be the other side of the uh, galaxy, and it can blow up, um, which is pretty insane. Uh, so yeah, let's get back to the Hitler sort of side. Um, he was standing up, and he had the massive flags in the background, and he had all the clones. And he said, today the uh, Resistance um, will, like die and burn all sorts and at the end he put his hand in the air just like Hitler and they all went like that uh, so there's a strong um, relationship well um, moral of Hitler in that sort of thing uh, last one I think JJ Abrams doesn't really like or either does or doesn't I haven't really decided yet he doesn't like the trees being chopped down in the Amazon rainforest because in the last fight scene you had um Khan and Jay fighting each other with the lightsabers and during that battle like 20 trees got chopped down because they were in the forest they were swinging around the lightsabers and it all got it was like this that's the tree and this is the lightsaber it all got chopped down and they're all falling down everywhere and meanwhile the planet was self-destructing because the core had just been blown up and obviously there's a sun inside it now so it's all having massive earthquakes everywhere and then eventually it all um, explodes so you've got none of the um, crust and then you've just got a massive sun in the way, and then that all explodes. They do like their explosions in Star Wars. You would have thought if the planet was self-destructing and it had a sun inside it, it would implode rather than explode, and it would have been a lot bigger explosion, there wouldn't have been fire and all sorts. But never mind, it's Star Wars. No one really cares about the science behind it. So, altogether, I thought this was a pretty good movie. Um, um, I think Luke Skywalker is going to become the new Yoda sort of character because he's in a mysterious hood at the end. Um, I'm a bit disappointed you didn't see much more of Luke. Um, and obviously he's quite old now. He's the old sort of figure, so he's wiser. 
going to be a lot more like Yoda who's going to train and then eventually he'll probably die and pass it on to Rey. This movie was pretty much just copying the original movies. It's the same sort of storyline. They're just introducing new characters and passing it on so they can make more movies, more money. Uh, but no, I really, really did enjoy this movie. I thought it was really good. I like the fact they've modernised it a tiny bit more. Like They've got, obviously, the flamethrowers that Stormtroopers have now. Uh, they've got the new lightsaber with the flames coming out the side. And it's not just a plain lightsaber like uh, the Jedis have. It's not just that tube. It's actually a flaming lightsaber all the way up, which just adds more effect to it. The mask I didn't really like of Khan. It had like it was just a gas mask, really. So um, in that aspect, I'm glad that he did take off for a lot. But the mind reading tricks are getting a bit out of control because now Khan can just put his hand up to anyone and then like realise what they're thinking, which was a bit in the original, but it's more extreme now. I did like the fact that Ray could uh, like ref um, stop Khan getting into her head. Uh, and at one point she actually got into Khan's head and was saying, oh, you're scared that you'd never become as more as powerful as Darth Vader, which, which is quite... I find it's quite interesting because even though you can't see like a beam going into each other's head, you can picture it in your head almost because they're like that far away from each other and you can see that you've got the sound effects which really help build the tension but you can almost see the mind reading actually happening. So as a reboot I thought this movie was amazing. The fight scenes were awesome. You've got um, the, rebel uh, the resistance and the rebellion uh, all on their TIE fighters going across the water and making a mess. But in this film, they were a lot more powerful. They had, they were just, the resistance, they were, whoa. I mean, they were the only chance that they had to um, attack against the First Order. First Order is now the new um, sort of Empire slash Sith. It's just the new version. It's the new evil. Um, but no, they're actually, the resistance is now really big. And there's a lot of people joining it. Um, in the last battle, they didn't have many uh, people in it, or TIE fighters or anything, um, or X-Wings. But they did in the water scene, um, which is by the Thousand-Year-Old Ladies pub sort of haven. And they're all going across the water. That was a really epic scene. And it made it look a bit well, like World War Two when the TIE fighters bombed the pub. And then the X-Wings all came in. They were fighting. Then you got all the stormtroopers on the ground. It was a really impressive scene. And he had quite a lot of fight scenes. Probably not as many as in the originals and the prequels. But it was still enough, I thought. Uh, you've got the re-relationship between Han and Leia. Unfortunately, Han died at the end of the movie. It's probably because he was getting too expensive. I'm not sure when to make it more of a movie. Because um, obviously Khan, his son, stabs him and then he falls off. Uh, I'm not sure, but I've heard he broke some limbs or bones or something during the filming. I'm not sure. I'd have to find out specifics. But no, it, it gets a bit hard when you've got, obviously, older actors. But he made a really good pass for it. So yeah, the epic fight scenes and a bit of romance, the bit of the old characters, and st it still felt like a Star Wars movie. There were a bit more movie aspects of it now. It was a bit, you could definitely see that it was a Disney movie. Uh, but it was a Disney mix with Star Wars. I think it made it even better. Uh, did it live up to what my expectations of the trailer were? Yes, I think it actually passed them. Um, the trailer originally, I thought, oh, it's... Well, I, I was really excited, obviously, but it wasn't... I thought the Khan was going to be a bit itty-witty, which he was. Um, but I didn't ever see the Khan's master sort of figure uh, in the trailer, which you did in the movie, and I thought it was a bit ridiculous, because at the start... You thought, oh, he's a massive god. And then he obviously turns into a hologram, which is a lot more reasonable. But if, if he is a massive god, which I'm not sure, he could just be a tiny person and then just hologrammed up to size. But if he is a massive god, it turns into a bit of Star Trek rather than Star Wars. Because, yes, Star Wars is aliens and all sorts, but you've never had giants or anything ridiculous. So it's just the um, classification of sci-fi and fiction really. There's one thing I can say to you, if you're a, um, a Star Wars fan and you've watched all the movies and you thought this movie was terrible and Disney is just terrible at making movies, I can see where you're coming from. It wasn't as good as the originals maybe, but it was a lot better than if Disney had put Donald Duck in or Mickey Mouse and then suddenly he reveals his cover and it's like, 
I'm Mickey Mouse. Woohoo! Um, that's that's all I can tell you. So that's pretty much that concludes my review. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's the first instant review. Instant reviews are me instantly reviewing the movie straight up. I've watched them well within reason, one or two days, um, with no notes and no major editing, and obviously it's got no clippets or photos really because uh, I can't get them because the movie isn't out yet. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to me, because I need subscribers. Thank you for watching my video. If you haven't watched Star Wars, go and watch it now. And if you haven't watched Star Wars, you shouldn't really have been watching this movie, because I revealed pretty much everything that just happened in Star Wars 7. So you're a bit stupid, because I did put a massive sign on the title saying, Major Spoilers. So, you're better than utter. Um, yeah, if you have watched the movie, comment below and say how you liked it. If you did or you didn't, if you think uh, Disney did a good job or didn't. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye. See you in the next episode.